All right, what's going on dudes and welcome to the third Minecraft snapshot of 2013. Why don't we go ahead and get rolling with some new features? So, right off the bat, you'll notice something feels a bit empty about the home screen, and that's because the texture pack button is missing. But not to fear, it's not gone. You will still be able to use texture packs. In fact, it's beneficial because it's been moved under the options menu, and what this allows you to do is actually bring it up in game. So, if we actually head on into a world here, once we reopen the options menu, you can select texture packs, and if I had any others installed, they'd show up here, and we'd be able to simply switch in game. So, much more convenient than you having to go out to the main menu every time you want to change your texture packs. All right, well, you got a bunch of new features actually in the game here, so why don't we get started with those? Now, the first one, not necessarily a pleasant thing for everyone, and that is that skeletons and zombies have apparently been made more difficult. Now, I have yet to test this out, so we're gonna do that right now. Let's start off with skeletons. So as far as I'm aware, the changes made to skeletons is that they're supposed to fire more rapidly when you get closer to them to make it harder to melee. So I guess we're about to find out. Why don't we go ahead and switch on over into survival and see if that seems to be the case. So we'll let them keep shooting us up close. I mean, it may be a placebo effect. It does seem like he's firing faster, though, by quite a bit. So let's actually, we'll exit. We'll keep the aggro on us and see if he slows down his fire rate. When we're farther away. Yeah, it definitely slows down. Now, I don't know if this was actually the case before, or if it's simply been, uh, if this is completely new, or if it's just that the, the difference between long range and close range has simply been increased. Well... Additionally, it's supposed to actually increase in difficulty as you up the game's difficulty, so why don't we test that as well? We'll switch on to hard and see if it makes his firing any more difficult. Let's see. Bring it on, man. Bring it on. It definitely is faster, though. There's, there's a pretty noticeable difference there. So, uh, yeah, it just makes it more difficult to melee the skeleton because he's going to knock you away with his arrows. So there we go. Changes with the skeletons, now let's move on to zombies. Now with the zombies, apparently they're just supposed to be harder to hit with a, with a bow and arrow, if that means they're more evasive, or if they just take less damage. I don't know, so why don't we go ahead and test that? Now, let's see. Let's try to hit him. What happens? Do you dodge? Can you dodge? No, it doesn't seem like it. Hmm. I can't say I know exactly what they meant by that. Again, we're still on hard, so it seems like it would be, uh, well, the hardest evasion possible, if there was evasion, but uh, maybe long range. Let's see, we'll let him out. We'll let him out of his pen to demonstrate the next thing, which is that when he catches on fire, he can actually light you on fire. So, needless to say, that's actually kind of a pain. <laughs> Make uh, zombie fighting uh, a bit more hazardous. Anyway. That's it for the supposed changes to the mechanics of zombies and skeletons. Seems like, at least with the skeletons, it's pretty noticeable. Um, and the zombies being able to light you on fire, that's also pretty noticeable as well. Okay, why don't we go ahead and move on to some other stuff. We got a new block, it's called the dropper. It looks exactly like a dispenser, well with the exception of a triangular mouth as opposed to a circular type mouth. I know no circles in Minecraft, but you get what I'm saying. So the dropper, as opposed to a dispenser, will only give you items in their uh, their state where they can be reused. So if we push a button here, this has arrows in it, and rather than shooting an arrow, it'll simply give you an arrow, whereas a dispenser, obviously, fires the arrow. So that's the difference between the two. Now additionally, you can use the, the dropper to actually pass items into containers. So we have a chest here, if we press the button, there we have an arrow, and it got passed into the chest. Here is the, the dropper right here with a stack of arrows in it. So that's how it works. Crafting recipe is a bunch of cobblestone, a hopper, and a piece of redstone. So there you have it. That's the dropper. Pretty, pretty simple, good for adventure maps. Um, in that you, you can actually give people arrows without firing them out of a dispenser. So that's how that works. Oh, and, and by the way, it actually can give you an arrow through a piece of glass so that you can't loot it in, in the case of an adventure map, something like that. All right, so here we have the quartz pillar blocks, 
And as you may notice, we've got a few in a horizontal pattern right here, and that's because you can actually do that now. If for whatever reason I need to switch on back into creative, I'm like, why can't I middle mouse this? Switch back into creative, and these can actually be placed down similar to the way wood works, or exactly the same, uh, same way wood works. So if we put it down on a vertical surface, it's going to have the, the pattern sticking out horizontally. Similar if we place it down horizontally, it'll stack normally in, a, in pillar fashion with the vertical lines. So that's a new thing with the quartz pillars. Pretty simple. Now we actually have something that's pretty cool. Very useful for something like an adventure map. So right now we have a comparator and it's up against a command block. Inside the command block we have a command that's testing for a player in a radius of five around the command block. So the slash test for command, I don't know if it's new or not for this snapshot, but Dinnerbone was telling people to use it. <laughs> so it actually allows you to do something like this where if you are within a radius of five from the command block and you say trip it off if the command block was successfully able to execute that command or that command brings back true then the comparator will actually output a redstone signal and the door will open in this case because we have it wired to a door now on the other hand if we're outside that five block radius and we flip the lever nothing will happen now, just to show you that this this lever right here isn't a dud, if I go within the five block radius, then the door will open once again. So I merely added this one so you could see me, see the door opened as I flipped it from a better angle. Um, again, go outside the five block radius here and the door will close. Pretty nifty for allowing you to determine whether a player is near enough for an event to happen in something like an adventure map. So uh, pretty cool. All right, so now let's move along to yet another feature to be added to the laundry list of the comparator's functions. So, right here we've got a minecart chest and it's sitting atop a detector rail. I just have this piece of redstone here so you can tell that it is. You can kind of see the graphic right there. But anyway, something new is that if you actually input an item into our minecart here, the comparator will register it and it will output a redstone signal. Now, I've seen some screenshots where supposedly if you load it up with a bunch of items in a bunch of different slots in the chest it will actually output a stronger redstone signal but for some reason that's just uh, not happening for me I'm not entirely sure why so anyway maybe a different setup here but I haven't been able to recreate it so anyway at least it'll output a, uh, a one block signal of redstone hold on let me go ahead and add some more just so you can see that it's only the the one block thing as I showed in the last uh, snapshot update with the regular chests up, uh, up next to a comparator so anyway functions the same way and perhaps there's a circumstance where if you add a bunch more items it will actually increase the output but haven't been able to get that to to happen yet all right well let's move on to yet another new entirely new would you even call this a block? Because it's not really a block. It's just a new type of minecart, I guess. So it's a it's a hopper minecart, and it functions in a manner that you might expect. The way that it's crafted is like so, as I'm sure you could uh, take a wild guess. So if you have it run under some chests, each of these chests have a certain item in them. It will pick up the item in the chest. Now, strangely enough, it seems to not pick up every chest. It's kind of picky as to what what chests it'll actually take items from for whatever reason And I also haven't figured out how you actually get it to give items I only know how you get it to take items. So it's a very greedy minecart <laughs> um, Because I, I put dispensers under the rail um, You can't put chests under the rail or the rail will break so I can't figure out how you actually would get it to pass it off, pass the items off, if that's even possible. But I'm sure someone will figure it out shortly if there is a way. So anyway, we got it empty right now. If we right click on it, the menu comes up, press the button, have it run under the chest. And sure enough, we get three out of five. That seems to be what happens each time I've run this through. It only picks up three out of the five. Similarly, with three chests, it picks up two. With two chests, it picks up one or two. It's very confusing. But... At the very least, it, uh, it might be due to the spacing 
might be due to the speed. I'm not entirely sure, but that's that's how it functions. So with a bit of fine tunage, I'm, I'm sure you could get it to, to work to where if you put items in certain chests, it'll automatically uh, pick at least one of them up when it goes under it. So just got to get the spacing right and stuff. All right, so finally, some changes to, or a slight change to the way TNT minecarts work. So rather than just blowing everything up when they're ignited and, and detonated, it'll leave the, the track alone. So that's actually very useful so that you don't have to rebuild the track every single time you, you shoot one of these off. So let's send it off, detonate it, and it should leave the track and any supporting blocks intact. So there we go. You'll notice the crater goes nicely around the uh, the rails. So that's new with the, uh, the TNT minecart. So anyway, that's about it for the new additions in Snapshot 13W03. Hope you've enjoyed. If you have, a rating would be much appreciated. Other than that, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.